everyone. It is Sunday morning, and it is another episode of The Bookseller. I'm your host, Jessica Gillen, here to bring you another awesome young adult book review. This week, it's Unearthed by Megan Spooner and Amy Kaufman. We'll get right into it. Thank you for joining me, and this show is brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. Sunday, April 8th, and this week I read and finished Unearthed by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This is a science fiction, science fantasy, sci-fi, if you will, in the YA category. We sometimes get books in this category. I will say that I have been disappointed with books in the past. I just feel as if there's a weirdness with sci-fi in the young adult. I don't know if there's just not enough science-y, cool nerdiness. It's always more about the love stuff, which is not, in my opinion, why I read science fiction. I read science fiction to nerd out, to learn about space, or, uh, I mean, historical fiction kind of is the same way with me. Like, I just need to know world building and the story behind it, the science behind it. I want to know all the nitty gritty, the little details. That's what science fiction and historical fiction is usually about for me. Although I guess I always like my books have world building because I'm a fantasy nerd. But at the same time, science fiction to me kind of envelops that fantasy aspect And usually there is a lot of world building because they talk about the science. So with that said, let's get into this. We're going to talk about what this book is, um, as well as some awesome adaption news. And then we'll take a quick break and then I'll jump into my review of this book. All right. So Unearthed is by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This is book one in the Unearthed duology. This is confirmed by both authors that this will be a duology. Book two will be called Undying. Unearthed, book one, was 384 pages hardcover. I personally got mine at the library. I had to rent it twice because I didn't finish it the first time I got it. I just had a lot of stuff going on. Um, So I rented it again or checked it out again and I finished it. It was... It was good, but you'll get into that in a minute. So this was published January 9th, 2018. Very, very recent. So we're definitely sticking in that realm of keeping you updated with the latest in book news and book releases. This book is extremely hyped. I went in not really knowing what's going on. I didn't read reviews at all. I went in blind, just knowing it's science fiction and being familiar with the authors. So let's talk about those authors then. The books that both these authors, Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner, have done together is the Starbound series. So those are the books called These Broken Stars, This Shadow World, and Their Fractured Light. These were also science fiction fantasy books with a little bit of a love story underneath. I personally read These Broken Stars It was one of those books that really surprised me. It was original. The content was awesome. I loved the characters. The storyline was beautiful. And even one of my close friends who is, if you think I'm bad, critiquing (laughs) this chick, let me tell you, she is harsh and she will not. She has no qualms not finishing a book. I find it really hard for me to put down a book as DNF, did not finish. I try to just push my way through, just like The Cruel Prince. There were so many times I wanted to give up on that book, but I didn't because I just wanted to finish it, give it to you straight up my truth. But my friend who's super critical, 
She will, as soon as the book is like not gaining her interest, she's done. She's moving on. She doesn't waste her time, which I can admire that. Um, but she really liked these broken stars and both of these authors have worked on this series together. I've not read the other two. It was, um, kind of random that I wrote or not wrote, but read these broken stars. So, and that was really good. Books by Amy Kaufman is also the Illuminae Files. This is a series in YA that is huge. And I will tell you, I read book one. I did not finish it. I will retry to read it. I think I still actually have it in my book piles behind me. I have thought about redoing it. I remember reading it and really not liking it, thinking it was kind of silly, but people are really talking about how this series is just phenomenal. She obviously knows what she's doing as far as science fiction because she's the author of the Starbound series, and now the Illuminae Files, which is all over Goodreads, all over Amazon. I mean, everybody is talking about those books right now. As well as the series, The Elementals. Haven't heard of that. Uh, books by Megan Spooner. So other than the Starbound series that she wrote with Amy Kaufman, she also has the Skylark series, Sherwood and Hunted. I have heard of Hunted, but I have not heard of the other books. So both of them are pretty uh, well-versed writers. They have some books under the, their belt and they have done a series together before. So they obviously connect really well and they can write really well together, which is kind of awesome. I'm sure they're really good friends. Maybe like really good at being critical with each other, but at the same time, feeling inspired with each other too, which is really awesome. I'd kind of want to know more about their friendship. It'd be pretty funny if they actually hate each other. <laughs> but anyway, so Unearthed got Goodreads rating of a 3.93, which is, I'm surprised. Uh, that tells me that there's a lot of two-star ratings and a lot of four-star ratings. So there's not a lot of the, in the middle. But on Amazon, it has a 4.3 rating. So I'm not really sure how I feel about the Goodreads rating just because The Cruel Prince, which I reviewed last week, had a huge rating. I think it was like 4.7 or something. And we all know how I felt about that. If you have not listened to my views on that book, it was the episode last week. I ranted. I raved. I kind of went a little crazy, cuckoo bananas, but it was probably entertaining. So if you haven't heard that one, should check it out because that was ridiculous that that got a 4.7. So when I saw this rating for Unearthed, I was kind of like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to not let that phase me. So let's talk about the adaption news. So this is pretty interesting. I don't really see a lot of books that get picked up before they're even published. It does happen occasionally. The Hate You Give, which was a book that released just last year, was one of those books before it released. It got a lot of hype leading up to the release of it. And so it got a lot of attention and that is actually being made into a movie. Well, on Earth is kind of in the same realm. So Columbia Pictures bought the rights to the film before it was published. Uh, this was in the workings, actually, in the summer of 2017. I think a lot of the articles that I read were coming out around June of 2017. So this has been in the works for a while, and it still is confirmed as um, being in development right now. So we're probably not going to get it this year. I would think probably next year when book two releases. Maybe even by the end of the year. Maybe. We really need to get some updates first before we can kind of assume the dates. So the director is going to be Doug Lyman. Uh, some of his other works as a director are American Made, all of the Jason Bourne movies. So very good movies. I saw that. I was like, okay, I'm down. The Edge of Tomorrow, Jumper, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So he obviously has a strong point in action movies. The only sci-fi movie that stuck out to me was the Jumper movie, which is awesome. As well as, I guess, Jason Bourne was kind of like 
action science fiction kind of in the beginning there because a lot of the concepts they were talking about were kind of new in the technology world. So I am kind of excited that that's the director. Now the screenplay writer and the producer, they have all worked on projects together. I know the producer, Tyler Thompson, he was the producer of American Made, which was directed by Doug Lyman. So they have worked on movies together before. Other projects that Tyler Thompson has produced was Hacksaw Ridge. It's a great historical movie. Everest, as well as Black Swan. So he has some talent for sure. However, he also produced Pride and Prejudice Zombies. We'll just let that one slide. (laughs) I guess. I saw that movie and I was just my face was kind of just like, really? Really? This is what I'm watching? Okay. I don't even think my boyfriend stayed with me the whole time watching that. He was like, and I'm done. (laughs) So the screenplay writers are Jez Butterworth and John Henry Butterworth. I'm curious if they are a couple or siblings. I didn't really look into that. Not really sure. But, uh, the other popular movies that they've written were Spectre, which was the the newer James Bond movie that came out, as well as Edge of of Tomorrow, which director Doug Liman also directed that movie. So, I don't really know how I feel about the writers. I mean, Spectre was a a good movie. It, It had a good script. And right now, it looks like the adaption news is in December, they were, as of then, writing on the script, kind of getting it ready to find the cast for this movie. So it does make me a little excited because Unearthed is science fiction heavy, but it also has a lot of action in it. So I think that the director choice, especially with the Jason Bourne movies, is awesome. I'm curious what he's going to do as far as the science fiction element. I hope that doesn't get kind of left because it is in space and I would assume that that's going to cost a lot of money to make. Not that they go out in space and make it, but just the visual effects that it's going to need might be expensive. So, so before we get into the synopsis and my review, we are going to take a quick break. I promise it'll be quick and brief, not even a minute long, I don't think. So just make sure you stay tuned, maybe get your uh, unearthed book up on Amazon ready to buy because I think this one's for you. Wednesdays on Eventide, Robert Yetter and Mike Shea sit down and throw albums at each other, talking about them, picking them apart, ripping them a new one. All different artists, all different genres, all different levels of suckage. It's Track Record, Wednesdays at 9 a.m. on the Eventide podcast feed. For more information, go to eventideent.com. You know, there's nothing quite as satisfying as a good conversation with intelligent company. Join comedian Don Smith every week as he sits down and talks with comedians, actors, filmmakers, writers, and everyday schmoes. It's The Life with Don Smith, Wednesdays at noon on 106.9 FM, and now available on the Eventide Entertainment Podcast feed every Friday on Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes. Welcome back. Thank you for listening to all that we have to offer here at Eventide Entertainment. I've said this so many times, but we are really, truly a family, uh, all of us, and there is something for everybody. Don't just support me. Support our whole team. Find another show in Eventide Entertainment that you love and you want to support. really helps all of us, especially if you write reviews, send us messages, You know, if you want something different, you like something that we do, our personality was annoying that week, we just want feedback, so we would really appreciate it if you guys would message us. Um, I will post my ways to contact me personally in the description below, so check that out and let me know what you think of this week's episode. All right, so let's break down the synopsis. I pulled the synopsis off Goodreads. You guys know me. I do not like to give you many spoilers in my podcast 
episodes. I will say, though, this week on YouTube, I will release a discussion video on this book, which will include spoilers. If you want to know spoilers or you've already read it and you kind of want to talk with me about those nail-biting parts that I just, ah, I wish I could tell you now, but I'm going to keep my cool, going to get my yoga on and chill. Really going to keep it low-key. <laughs> but make sure to check out that week. I will have that up this week as well as a bunch of videos all released hopefully by Monday. My YouTube is live. My Patreon is live. I just don't have a lot of content up there right now. It is coming, guys. I promise. Work was crazy. Life happens. It will be up. So thank you for sticking with me. So, synopsis. When Earth intercepts a message from a long extinct alien race, it seems like the solution the planet has been waiting for. The Undying's advanced technology has the potential to undo environmental damage and turn lives around. And Gaia, their former home planet, is a treasure trove waiting to be uncovered. For Jules and Addison and his fellow scholars, the discovery of an alien culture offers unprecedented opportunity for study. As long as scavengers like Amelia Radcliffe don't loot everything first. Mia and Jules' different reasons for smuggling themselves onto Gaia put themselves immediately at odds. But after escaping a dangerous confrontation with other scavers, they form a fragile alliance. In order to penetrate the Undying's temple and reach the tech and information hidden within, the two must decode the ancient race's secrets and survive their traps. But the more they learn about the Undying, the more their presence in the temple seems to be part of a grand design that could spell the end of the human race. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, that was my like dramatic sound effect for you. <laughs> so, as you could tell, it has some mystery, it has some sciencey elements, some puzzles as well as a lot of action. I, oh my god, I, I really liked this book. I, it was boring at parts, but it picks up, it has a lot of action, and there's always a sense of, we need to hurry up and get through this kind of um, impending doom, if you will. So let's break it down to the three areas that I love to break down my books into. World building, plot, and characters. And then we'll get to my overall rating and if I would recommend it to you guys. So, world building. So, it is science fiction. It's described as Indiana Jones, Laura Croft, in space. I said this last week. It is definitely giving me Indiana Jones vibes. Uh, being in an ancient temple, archaeologists kind of taking a lot of notes going slow as far as telling you about the history of the the alien race um there's a ton of world building as far as the alien planet Gaia it's definitely lacking a little bit in earth the world building and and how the state of earth is we do get some glimpses of how earth is doing and what's going on and why this technology is so important during Mia's point of view. So as you could tell, it does switch point of views. But in Mia's point of view, she is the scaver. She is the one that is hoping to bring technology back to her planet Earth in order to help not only Earth as a whole and pull us out of this bleak, sad, destruction environment lacking a lot of resources kind of feeling. And um, that's something really important to her. But we don't get much else as far as the state Earth is in. We get a little bit. We get a little bit of politics. But for the most part, a lot of the world building is Gaia, which does make sense because the majority of the book, I would say like 99.5% of the book, takes place on Gaia. So it makes sense why all the world building was on Gaia. 
So we won't tick too many points off for that. The technology that Gaia has is because of the this race, alien race, that is called the Undying. And we don't really know much about the Undying. There is some kind of little pieces strewn throughout the book, but it is layered in a lot of mystery. So, yeah. So with the technology, it's insanely powerful. It's even just a little bit of it has helped to create power grids that were once lost for many years. Uh, It's able to power um, spaceships and governments and the whole nine yards. So it's really powerful and the people of Earth want more of this technology. So that's why scavers and mercenaries are going to Gaia to help pick these temples or palaces and things like that clean of this technology not only for themselves to make money, but also to enrich the lives of humans on Earth. So that's like the main focus is this technology, blah, blah, blah. So the plot. Extremely mysterious. A lot of questions in regards to who the Undying were and how and why they created these temples as far as how their technology works and that kind of thing. We get a little bit, doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, There was some pieces missing there as far as what it is, how it was created. It's very much or enveloped in a lot of mystery. So we get the switching point of views between Jules and Mia um, in order to help progress the plot. The characters themselves, Jules, is the studious archaeologist and scholar with a very famous father who he deeply cares for. That's his driving force in this book. His goal is to prove that his father's theories about the Undying and their artifacts and the potential danger that it could bring to Earth um, is something that his father worked many years to prove. It was really difficult, though, to prove because all they ever got was, like, this secret hidden message and what did it mean? And they sent, the government sent a space team to kind of research one of the temples and they died in all the traps and pitfalls and stuff. So they kind of like put it on the back burner. Like that's not important. We don't need to learn about who the undying were. We just need to somehow find how to get our hands on this technology. So that was the main important thing for the government. It wasn't like we need to learn more about this history or this culture. It was more so we need to get our hands on this technology, which very much mirrors how we are in the world right now. Technology is huge, and that's why everyone wants to get their hands on. And we are destroying cultures because of what technology is doing to us. We're destroying cultures just to get our hands on more information. But it's not information that is worthy of knowing like history. I mean, we want to know how to make cars fly and what gives us better gas mileage and uh, the latest, greatest phones and face recognition. That's kind of what's important right now. And it definitely mirrors into this book that Earth humans very much focus on technology, not so much as the interpersonal relationships and inner workings um, that human to human contact delivers. So Jules goes to or smuggles himself into the alien planet Gaia in order to go to these temples to find the proof um, to research that would deem a greater need to put more effort into the resources in understanding more about the alien race, the undying, rather than just taking that technology. He's more coming from the perspective of we need to know what this is, What happened to the Undying? Why did they die? What happened to them? Is this technology going to be the beginning of the end for humans? Should we look into this more before just grabbing stuff? So that's kind of like where he's coming from. Very much the science-y scholar knows in a book kind of um, description of him. Mia is the opposite. So if you think of everything opposite of what Jules is, That's what Mia is. She is resourceful, spunky. She 
she's described as being very short and little. She is a very good fighter. She is extremely resourceful in the fact that she can make her own little um, knives and little equipment in order to better suit her needs. So she is a scavenger slash mercenary because she can hurt people. She knows how to escape. She knows how to not only avoid confrontation, but be able to get around it or like not lie her way through, but kind of is able to use the resources at her disposal and take advantage of that in order to never get herself in trouble, to always kind of be one up on the enemy. So she is hired to Gaia to steal artifacts and to bring them back to Earth. So she wants to get her hands on that technology where Jules is going there to find something, some kind of proof that's like, listen, we need to learn more before we take things. But her hope, Mia's hope, is to find enough artifacts and high-valued alien technology in order to buy her little sister's freedom. So we learn about our little sister, and this is Mia's driving force. Uh, So both Mia and Jules are doing this for somebody that they love. Very important. So, like I said, it does switch perspectives. I would say every other chapter is, you know, Mia. Every other chapter is Jules. And it balances really well. I would say that I enjoyed getting to have both perspectives. I know some people really like Mia more because she's more of an entertaining character. But the nerd in me really loved to read Jules because he was the one that we learned more about the artifacts and what was written on the temples and the writings and kind of the more of the world building and history elements, which you know I love, was mostly in Jules' point of views. Mia's was more of like the action, kind of funny dialogue type of chapters. A little more lighthearted, but very action-y too. So there is some setup for romance, but it's not overwhelming. Some people were kind of irritated because they would say comments at the beginning that, oh my god, he's cute and this and that. Well, let's be real. When you meet somebody and you're having to, I don't know, hang out with them for a long time, I would think that the the thought in your head, whether it's guy or girl, like, oh, she's cute, he's funny, I like his eyes, or whatever, that does pass through our heads. We are humans, we reproduce, we are attracted to people, we're not attracted to people, it's just how it is, it's real. So people getting irritated that that little bit of romance kind of threw me off because it wasn't like so much in YA where it's like insta-love. It wasn't like that at all. It was very much an underlining element in the story. It was more, more of the focus was the action, getting through the temple, learning about the history and the little comments, the banter between them. Um, how they communicated, how they learned to trust each other, then lost their trust, and then trusted each other again. So it was very much a complicated relationship that had a lot of pieces. It wasn't just love and instant love. No, there was more to that. They're driving forces because they're so different. It makes it hard for them to trust one another. So, I mean, yeah, they think each other is cute, but at the same time, they're kind of like, yeah, she's cute, but she also wants to take everything that I want to research, so I don't really respect that about her. But she's really cool, and I feel safe around her. So that was kind of their love stuff. I did like it. I thought it was very low-key, not in the forefront. I think book two will have a little bit more development in that area, but for the most part, it was kind of low-key in this book, which I liked. Slow. It was a slow burn. So going back to the plot, because I had to kind of jump in there and tell you about the characters before we talk about the plot some more. So they wind up, Jules and Mia wind up together pretty much at the very beginning of the book. And Jules actually lies to Mia in order to get her to help him get to the massive temple that the other scavs don't know about, that um, they're kind of running to the temple that is known rather than Jules because of his father, he knows more about the 
bigger temples, the temples that really we should go to. There might be important information there. But he lies to her and says, yes, there's technology there for you to steal. Come with me. Let's do this together. I need to go there for X, Y, and Z. You need to go there to steal technology. I know it's there 100%. And she believes him. And because she has that more like her way of living is more on spontaneous, like he needs to think through everything. Well, when they're stuck in conflict or they get caught, she is the one that is the fast thinker, the one that can see how to get them out of that situation. And I think he saw that in her and which is why he lied to her to get her to come with him. So he lies to her to tell her like, hey, there's technology here in order to help him or help her get him to the temple. He goes there because of the symbol that kind of represents catastrophe. And he wants to understand wh- what does this mean? Like c- catastrophe, like is this what happened? Why the undying are no more? Why they're not here on this planet anymore? Which is why he goes to this temple. Because it's important to know what happened to them. And they left all this technology is this technology going to be what brings Earth down? So the majority of the book is them being chased through this temple because they get caught. They have to go through all these different puzzles, kind of breaking down a lot of the symbols and a lot of the writings that the Undying had and what it means. I would say like 80% of the book is breaking down the puzzles, you know, some action with them getting chased, the need to survive. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of threats in this book that makes you feel like, okay, come on, you need to hurry up, like, stop taking so long to read this scripture or whatever you're figuring out with these symbols, we need to go. And Mia is actually the one that kind of is pushing this plot a lot, is pushing Jules to kind of like, come on, dude, like, yeah, keep taking pictures, but seriously, like, there's people chasing us. We need to hurry up. Um, So that kind of was good. It kept you engaged in the book, and that pretty much happened 30% in and through the end of the book. So it's extremely science and puzzle heavy, a lot of inner dialogue. There is some dialogue between them, but for the most part, the point of view is you're going to see what kind of is going on in their head, as well as a lot of descriptions and history as far as the undying. It's really cool. (laughs) I mean, yeah. So overall, I gave this four stars because of the elements of mystery. The world building was really well done, especially because it was just focused on Gaia. I wish there was a little bit more on Earth, but I think book two is really going to have Earth at the forefront. um, And we're going to get that world building, especially with that cliffhanger ending. That was so good. I don't think anyone saw that coming, and if they did, they're lying, (laughs) or maybe they're just really, really smart. I don't know. I just thought it was so well written that it kept you on the edge of your seat, wanting to know who the Undying are, why did they leave these writings for someone to eventually read, why did they send this secret message to Earth, what does this all mean? And the thing is, You don't even get all those questions answered. So you're reading this and you're like coming up with more questions, more questions that just need all these answers. And by the end of it, you're kind of like, just tell me who the undying are, please. Like what happened to them? And you get it right at the very end. Holy crap. So good. So, so, so good. Probably one of the best science fiction books I've read in YA. YA is very weak in the science fiction genre, and this was really impressive. You can tell that the writers really have a relationship with each other, just how well the book flows. Yes, it is description heavy, and this really takes a hit in YA. I think a lot of YA readers don't want that. I don't really know what they want sometimes. I have just always been really that kind of person that loves description heavy, that loves learning about the world, that loves learning about um, the inner workings of how people work. And this book was awesome. The puzzles at times kind of were like, 
okay, like we don't need to say the same thing again. But at the same time, it was really cool kind of getting my own mind to figure it out along with the characters. So yeah, four stars, one of the best science fiction books I've read in young adult. I'm super impressed. There's so much stuff that happens and I wish I could tell you guys. Please just give this book a shot. If you love science fiction, if you love, I mean, aliens and space and Indiana Jones, this book is for you. Wow. I'm impressed and I'm super happy that I got to experience that. That was really good. 2019 cannot come fast enough. I cannot wait to see this even adapted into a film, especially with that director. The action scenes are going to be so good. I'm really excited. So that was my review of Unearthed. Please check it out. It was so good. I cannot recommend it enough. Look for my video this week. It'll probably be around Thursday, Friday, and we will have a discussion on this book, and I will talk about all the, the, duh, all the craziness that I wish I could spill right now. But we'll leave that just so you can have a spoiler-free review. If you want more content, you know where to find me. Look for the link in the description. And thank you for joining me for another week. Next week, we'll have a kind of a change of pace. We'll get into that next week, though. Have a good Sunday, and thank you for joining me. Bye.